Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Well, good evening and welcome to the Beltline Church of Christ and the Discovery Bible Study. We are so glad you joined us today. We are in Judges chapter 13. If you've been with us for a while, you know we're working our way through this incredible book. And today we get to see the beginnings of Samson. The, the good story about Samson. The only good chapter about well, let's Samson. Let's not say that. Okay, keep going. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Trey's going to be reading from the New Living Translation all 25 verses of chapter 13. We hope that you'll follow along with us. Trey, take it away. All right. <clears throat> Again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight, so the Lord handed them over to the Philistines who oppressed them for 40 years. In those days, a man named Manoah from the tribe of Dan lived in the town of Zorah. His wife was unable to become pregnant, and they had no children. The angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah's wife and said, even though you have been unable to have children, you will soon become pregnant and give birth to a son. So be careful. You must not drink wine or any other alcoholic drink or eat any forbidden food. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and his hair must never be cut, for he will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. He will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. The woman ran and told her husband, A man of God appeared to me. He looked like one of God's angels, terrifying to see. I, I didn't ask where he was from, and he didn't tell me his name. But he told me, You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must not drink wine or any alcoholic drink, nor eat any forbidden food. For your son will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite, from the moment of his birth until the day of his death. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord, saying, Lord, Please let the man of God come back to us again and give us more instructions about this son who is to be born. God answered Manoah's prayer. And the angel of God appeared once again to his wife as she was sitting in the field. <coughs> but her husband Manoah was not with her. So she quickly ran and told her husband, The man who appeared to me the other day is here again. Manoah ran back with his wife and asked, Are you the man who spoke to my wife the other day? Yes, he replied, I am. So Manoah asked him, when your words come true, what kind of rules should govern the boy's life and work? The angel of the Lord replied, Be sure your wife follows the instructions I gave her. She must not eat grapes or raisins, drink wine or any other alcoholic drink, or eat any forbidden food. Then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, Please stay here until we can prepare a young goat for you to eat. I will stay, the angel of the Lord replied, but I will not eat anything. However, you may prepare a burnt offering as a sacrifice to the Lord. Manoah didn't realize it was the angel of the Lord. Then Manoah asked the angel of the Lord, What is your name? For when all this comes true, we want to honor you. Why do you ask my name? The angel of the Lord replied. It is too wonderful for you to understand. Then Manoah took a young goat and a grain offering and offered it on a rock as a sacrifice to the Lord. And Manoah and his wife watched, and the Lord did an amazing thing. As the flames from the altar shot up toward the sky, the angel of the Lord ascended in the fire. When Manoah and his wife saw this, they fell on their faces to the ground, and the angel did not appear again to Manoah and his wife. Manoah finally realized it was the angel of the Lord, and he said to his wife, We'll certainly die. We have seen God. But his wife said, if the Lord were going to kill us, he wouldn't have accepted our burnt offering and grain offering. He wouldn't have appeared to us and told us this wonderful thing and done these miracles. When her son was born, she named him Samson, and the Lord blessed him as he grew up. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he lived in Menhadan, which is located between the towns of Zorah and Eshtol. All right, Such there is story. chapter 13. <laughs> the best chapter about Samson because he wasn't born yet. <laughs> no, it's like, oh. oh, boy. All right, well, let's see uh, Let's see where these questions lead us today. Uh, Keith, what's question number one? I still like Samson. Okay, all right, question number one. What do we learn about God from these passages? What do we learn about God from these passages? I love how God is listening to us. You know, God shows up, or, or the angel shows up, and he tells, uh, the, <laughs> excuse me, tells them what's going to go on. 
And then they pray to him and they say, will he come back and, and tell us more? And God heard that and God sent the angel back. And, and so many times we sit in our own little world, our own little box, and, and we say, oh, where's God? Is he here? Is he there? And we focus so inward, we don't focus outward. And we got to remember, God is there with us. God knows what's going on in our hearts, in our minds, in our life. God is with us. God is always with us, and he's always listening to us. And I just love that. That's good. That's good. I like verse 18. Uh, where they're asking for his name, and the angel of the re Lord replies, it is too wonderful for you to understand. We get one of our uh, songs from this verse, too wonderful for comprehension. I can't remember the name of the song now. Uh, what is it? <laughs> like nothing ever seen or heard. <laughs> what is it? I can't remember. But anyway, that song, that I, I, you probably don't know it from my singing of it. But anyway, I love that, that idea that it's too wonderful to comprehend. He says, you, you can't know my name. It's just that... There's not one name that we could give God that's all encompassing, right? And so it's you yeah, trying no, to figure out the song now. <laughs> you are beautiful. You are, yeah. Uh, sorry, I just ruined this whole thing. So forgive me for that. And I stand. I stand. I stand in awe of you. Yes, thank you. That's the song. Um, you can go, you know, Google that, pull it up, and listen to it as part of this. But the name of the Lord is too wonderful. I, I just, I love that idea about God. He, he is a wonderful God. He is a good God. He is a mighty God. Absolutely. But there's not one word that we can attribute to God that fully. Uh, shows us who he is. He says, you, you just can't understand. I, I love that. What um, do you see here, Trey? Okay, so two things. Um, God is a God who answers our prayers. Manoah uh, prays. You know, this, this message comes. God chooses them while they're, while they're still, you know, enslaved. And, and, and this is the longest period of time, that 40 years, right? Mm -hmm. This is the longest period so far, of time yeah. to have been, yeah, at this point, to have been enslaved. And so this pattern of of being with God and being in fellowship with God by obedient faith and then going into idolatry of their surrounding countries and, and being enslaved by those countries and then crying out, repenting, and then God delivering them. And so here's God bringing about a deliverer again and uh, for these people that have continued to do this. But Manoah prays to God, you, you told my wife this message, I want to hear it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It, it was sufficient for his wife to have heard it. Mm -hmm. It was sufficient. You know, they got the message. She understood what, what what she was told, and yet God has the 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 compassion. He has the patience. He has the, whatever you want to call it to also give the message to Manoah. And I think that's that's a really good thing that that God is going to do that with us too. He yeah, would, I mean, they're both going to be raising him, and yeah. so they yeah. both need that extra. Hey, this is directly from God. Right. I, that's big. I but I like it because he didn't really say anything. He said, "Just make sure your wife follows the instructions that I told her." Yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I keep mm. going, jumping my. But he answers his prayers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just the presence of the angel yes. uh, well, is going to make a huge difference in, in how Manoah does what he does. From and they didn't even know who he was at that time. Right. I mean, right. right. Just thought it yeah. just. But but it's kind of strange because it says that he was uh, the ESV says he's awesome. So it's like so there's somebody from God, but we don't know his angel, but we know he's awesome. He's awesome. And then that yeah, says he was. Yeah, well, we don't know. I think I think you mentioned this the last time we tried to do this lesson was uh, that you know we don't know if he was glowing. We don't know if he. Yeah, right. We don't know what his presence looked like that made him terrifying or awesome. You know these translated different words, but the same idea comes across. Yeah. He was awesome. He was awesome. You said too. You Another song. One. Our God is awesome. awesome. Hey, we're just singing today. Let's just have a singing service right here with us. You said you had two points. Did you get both of them or just one? Um, well, the, yeah, number one, the fact that uh, oh, this is the longest period of time okay, okay, that, that okay. And these people have been enslaved. They have been suffering, and but God has not forgotten them. He's still with them. Secondly, he hears their prayer you, again. Here we go again. Well, and to piggyback off of that, uh, verse 13, uh, again, it's been 40 years, but... But realize he's raising up Samson even before, right? And so yeah. I, I love that. So I, I, we don't know how old Samson is when no. he finally starts or how to. Old they are. Or, or yeah. yeah. And so um, you know God is moving to, to deliver them, even though it won't be twenty plus years probably before this deliverance even begins. And it just to me it points us right back to Romans five, why we were still yeah. sinners. Christ yeah. died for us. Well, while they're in the middle of idolatry, God is raising up Samson. Yeah. Now he's going to have some issues. Right. I'm sorry, but and, and yeah. he's not going to fix it right then. It, it's, no, it's still several it's, more it's years gonna before time. it comes. That's to, right. To, but God is moving for yes. His people, yes. yeah. and I think that's an. He's important always point. watching. He's always planning one step ahead. Yep. So he, he's, he's not always with us. He's always. I mean, yeah, yeah. he's good. So. All right, well, let's move on to, are you guys good over there? Yep. You want yeah. another song to sing? Yeah. Uh, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> All right, question number two, Keith, what do we got? Is what do we learn about people from this passage? What do we learn about people from this passage? 
Okay, once again, I guess I guess I got to chase the tangent. I love how the husband and wife are put together. So many times we try to put the husband here, the wife here, and here it's like the angel is putting them together. Do what I told your wife to do. Yes, I'm going to come back and tell you too that this is the same story I told her. Yes, I'm here for you. But too many times we try to separate the husband and wife. when We try to distance from each other. And even in our spiritual life, we don't really look at, at our spiritual growth as husband and wife. I guess what I'm trying to do is say this. We need to stress that the husband and wife is not just... Uh, two people. When when you get married, you're joined together as one. Yeah. And, and I love the story about Job because God took God allowed Satan to take everything away from Job except for his wife because his wife was part of him. And and I, I think the story reiterates the two. God views the spouse. Okay, that's Job's really bad wife story. was not quite yeah, the, yeah. the great <laughs> know, encourager, know, but, but I understand what you're saying, and you're if right. Job would have right. had Manoah's wife. That would have been a great <laughs> illustration. <laughs> We just need to treat our spouses yes. closer and more spiritual leaders with us. They're, we're a team. Yes. We, we, they, she stands beside, not yes. behind. That's right. right. That's and I believe any marriage can be saved as long as both parties are willing to work it out. Amen. Yeah, so, absolutely. I know I've ran all the way around the tree now. So, okay, so what do y'all learn? About people on this podcast. Um, okay, so I think I think yours kind of goes along with this, doesn't it? <laughs> I really don't remember what my what my point was the last time we tried. Just to record how God this. honors women, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. No, here it is again. Don't re- don't forget that in the Gospels, the people who saw Jesus first resurrected, and the people who bring the message back are women, and uh, and the men discount it because they're women and and then later when god uh, when jesus is revealed to them he he chastises them for not believing the women Mm -hmm. and so uh, jesus brings equality and in this culture women were not treated as they should have been treated and uh and and the angel of the lord jesus continually brings women to the forefront and says hey she she is a precious image of god himself she is uh, just as equal in, in this creation as any man has ever been. And uh, God does this reminder over and over again throughout the, the Bible. And, and, and they didn't get it. We don't always get it. But we need to recognize that. And I would also you know, lead that to other, thing, other people to recognize anyone who is looked down on or who is not treated as equal, who is not valued as they should be. God's heart is for them, yeah. and so when we when we mistreat those who who uh, maybe are handicapped or don't have the the, the capabilities to do things or, or the abilities to do things, you know, it's wrong. We need to recognize their worth and the fact that they are made in the image of God. Every life is precious to God. He, he loves all of us as if there's just one of us. The question I always ask is, who did Jesus die for? Everybody. And if if we look down on somebody, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Jesus died for that person. Right. Jesus died for that. For, that Jesus died for all of us, even me. So if I start putting different people in different classes, no. then I'm saying I am going to judge more than Jesus is. Right. Jesus loves all of us, yeah. no matter how how bad we can't sing. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It just doesn't work. Well, I look at this and I, I like uh, the end, like basically verse 21 on. You have Manoah there who has this warped view of Jesus or warped view of God. I believe the angel of the Lord is a pre-incarnate Jesus, by the way. Uh, So it's Jesus before he was Jesus, uh, born in the flesh. And so that's that's just my take on the angel of the Lord. You don't have to agree with that, but we can talk about that another time. I'm not going to say you'd be wrong. I'm just going to say we we could talk about that another time. But anyway, he says, oh, we're going to die, right? And how many times do we jump to the wrong conclusions about God, right? And so as people... I think we see that here with Manoah. We think, well, God can never forgive me for that, or God can never do this, or I've just gone too far, or I, it doesn't matter if I do this sin. It only matters if I do, you know, yeah. and we jump to these wrong conclusions about God and his wife yep. uh, because she, she seems to be, Level in my headed. opinion, the more spiritual yes. of the two. Yeah. And she's like, listen, God just showed us this amazing miracle yeah. of, of ascending in the flame, and we're going to have a kid. This is going to be incredible. Yeah. We can why trust would, him. Why would he kill us? We can trust him, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I, I guess the other thing is we need people, and I think maybe this is your point about a spouse. Uh, we need someone like a spouse or someone, if you're not married, who can speak that truth. Yeah. And maybe uh, when we jump to those conclusions about God that are often wrong, oh, someone that says, well, wait a minute, let's yeah. let's think through that and let's see if we can we can maybe find the, the middle ground here. And that's a good point also. Talk about what your talk about what your perceptions are and then somebody around you can say, well, really? I, I, I think they meant this or this. And it kind of pulls right. in before you start jumping off the handle, talk about stuff. Yeah. So. I wanted to, oh, I got two more things. Come on, uh, let's, let's have it, let's have it. Okay, number one is is worship, okay? Um, he he says, we wanna, we wanna, you know, 
prepare a goat for you, and he says, I'm not going to eat it, but you can make a sacrifice to the Lord. He never brings up a grain offering. And so it's almost as if Manoah and his wife, go, they go prepare this, and it says they also prepare a grain offering. That was never talked about. That wasn't something commanded by God. You know, no, There was nothing made there about in, in this instant, but it's more. And it's um, kind of like uh, a sermon that Steve preached recently about, hey, what more can we do? Let's. God deserves all of our worship, all of our praise. And and when you see uh, extravagant, scandalously extravagant worship, um, we should appreciate that, and we should desire to to be able to give God more and to do more for Him and in His service. And so, you know, they they bring another more offering, you know, as a sacrifice to Him, and it's accepted. It's yeah. accepted, and, and, and Jesus becomes, or this angel of the Lord goes into the flame. He's a part of, the, you know, this is totally accepted by God. And, and if we're going to take other places in the scripture as, hey, look at what God did with this, then we should take this one too and recognize God was pleased with them giving even more. And we need to look in ways that we could give even more. And, yeah. you know, in the Old Testament, uh, tithing was something that was bound uh, to the people. In the New Testament, it says, give as you're prospered. Yeah. And so tithing, which is 10%, that's, that's a good place to start. We're, we have better promises. We have a better uh, hope. We have everything you know, is superior under the, old law, um, under the new law than was under the old law. And so we should go even further. We should give him as much as we possibly can. So don't can. do just bare minimum. Right, right. Gracious. Let's go. Let's go all. Let's in. give the grain offering. I, I love that. I love that. So he says, "We're going to prepare this young goat." He says, pour, "You know, make it a burnt offering." And then they bring the burnt offering and the grain offering. Yes. They went above and beyond. Like, like they went the extra mile. Yeah. They, they, they didn't. Someone's going to sue them and take away their tunic. They said, "Here, have the cloak yeah. too." You know, just like Jesus was saying in the Sermon on the Mount. That is, that is huge. Yeah, that, that um, is such a powerful. Thought. Okay, so another side to that. <laughs> is um, remember when the angel comes to her the second time? Where is she? She's in the field. Her husband's not with her. So field is where the grains would have been, mm -hmm. right? The husband was not with her. Why? Because you keep the goats out of the grain, right? And so he's probably the shepherd in the family. He's probably taking care of that. She's taking care of the farm work, and uh, and so she has to run go get him because he's feeding. You know, he's got the goats out in the pasture somewhere, or in, on a hill somewhere, eating, you know, taking care of them. And I mean, that's just, I'm reading into it a little bit, but I still here's. Yeah. Here's maybe her offering, you know. Yeah. Well, that that didn't cost me anything, husband. I, and I know that these goats are precious to you, and they're precious to both of us. You know, they're going to give us life. But at the same time, this is what I work on. This Ooh, is what I good. want to give to God because that's this really is who good. I am. I mean, we could go a whole lot of places yeah. with that to recognize God honored what she brought or what they brought to Him, and and obviously, you know. This is a family working together, and they're giving everything they can mm -hmm. to him. So I, I don't know. I, th I think there's something to I that. I do. I think that's good. I, like I had that. never really considered yeah. that before, but that's fantastic. So, yeah, that's so where both, she was. So she, she used yeah. what she had to honor God. And, and you, you mentioned something in passing just a second ago about how Jesus ascends from the flames of this yeah. offering. So he's connected to the offering. Yeah. So yeah. what we offer, Jesus is connected to. Right. That's powerful yeah. when you think about that. Well, and, and you know, the way that it's described in Leviticus, and then again, uh, Paul brings it up as an illustration, uh, is you know, being a sweet savor, a right? a sweet aroma. smelling yeah. aroma that God takes it in. You know, it, right. becomes, it becomes part of him. It goes into him. He accepts it as mm, part of that's him, good. which make, brings glory to it and, and makes it magnificent and, and Wow, it should just make us want to worship yeah. all the time and say, I want to give more, I want to do more, I want to show my love for God even more, and I want it to, to just multiply throughout all the people who I might come in contact with. Now, you know, I'm praising God, now they're going to praise God, and they're going to praise God, and, and, and we're just going to cause more worship to, to go up to heaven, and, and He deserves it. And if we don't, the rocks themselves will cry out. That's the right. trees mm. will, will sway in his presence. You know, are, are you going to give him what he deserves or are you going to withhold that? Yeah. Yeah. Man, it, and it's not ours. That, that's what no, we yeah, that's right. I, know, I keep saying this all the time. It's not ours. Yeah. It's God's. Yeah. And we're just giving back to God what is his. Mm -hmm. And it's like, because when we die, we're not going to take it with us. All right. It is. I got one more. I'm really oh, sorry. Man, come on. <laughs> this, this is, hey, right now, this is worth the cost of sitting right. here and listening to this. Just those last points. We're powerful things. So okay, give us so, another one, brother. So here comes Manoah, right? And he wants to ask the man of God you know, to confirm what his wife has told him because he's of his culture. He is from that day. And so maybe he's not listening to her as he should. I'm glad he finally does. He obviously learns that, hopefully, through this experience. Um, but something that is said, he says in verse 12, when your words come true, when all this comes to pass, we, we put our trust in you, we recognize you're from God, this is absolute. What kind of rules should govern the boy's life? But then he says, and work. We're made to work. 
We are made for work. It is good for us to work. It is good for us to, to passionately go after and accomplish the things that God has naturally gifted us to accomplish mm-hmm. and to do. And so if you have you know, the ability to be, you know, whatever it is, what, if you're drawn to criminal justice and you become a police officer and you are a peacemaker in a community, this is, this is ordained by God, this is blessed by God, this is given to you in order for you to bring out the best in you. You have a work. Before this child was born, God recognizes, his father recognizes, his mother recognizes that there is a work for him to do, and, and you know, it, it, it echoes in Ephesians two ten that we were created for good, good. works, right. and so you you are gifted, you are are given the abilities that you have from God, which aren't your own, and so use them. They they they're God's. God blessed you. God put you in this place and in this time for this reason, and, and give so you the talents and everything. You yeah, so that now you can accomplish it, and so go and do those things. When when God is is leading you, there is nothing that can't be accomplished, and it's going to use your skill set to do the exact things that he wants done right. in the people around you. And so, wow. That's good. That's yeah. good. I like it. Well, hey, let's move on to question number three. <laughs> do we want to ask me to get another point? No, no, I'm good. I'm okay. good. I'm finally, I'm, I'm done. I'm sorry. <laughs> question sorry. number three, Keith, what do we got? Is how will you put this into practice? Mm. How will you put this passage into practice? I want to go back to how when they were thinking about making the offering, they already had the goat. They already had the grain. They already had the rock. They were prepared to worship. Even with the angel not there, they had everything that they need, that they knew what to do. Yeah. They, they knew how to do it. They knew what was it, was pleasing to God. I want to make sure that I am prepared when I walk into a circumstance or when I meet somebody, I am ready to be the servant of God, be the, the messenger of God, and be the instrument that God uses to touch them and talk to their lives. I, I want to be here for God to use me. As Peter says, be ready to give it yes. a, a, a defense of the hope that you have within you. Yeah. So that, that's good. And like what the husband did, I want to be able to run and yeah. serve God. Hey, so, I like it. Yeah, that's good. I like it. That's, that's awesome. I, I go back to the uh, the grain offering. I, I just I just really like that idea. So he says, go ahead and offer the goat, and they bring extra. Yeah. I, I want to bring extra. I just want to bring more to God um, every possible time that I can. Just keep bringing more and more and more and more and more he's worthy of it he deserves it and so uh don't let me uh, don't let me get by with the bare minimums let, let me go above and beyond for jesus and uh and that'll show itself in a lot of different ways but i, I just really like that idea so that's good stuff yes. um i would say and and this is kind of as opposed to what we find in samson okay but his parents um they were humble they humbly accepted this. They didn't say, you know, she didn't laugh. She, you know, like Sarah, um, she laughed at God when he said, you're going to have a son in your old age. You know, mm-hmm. this, this she, it doesn't say that she laughs at him. She, she doesn't doubt. I mean, she has this, I, I mean, from what we understand, from what we see here, she is ready to go, you know, and uh, she's faithful. And, and so this humble acceptance of God's will in my life and then moving forward into it. And, uh, and, and you know, we don't know a whole lot about Manoah, and, and we don't know why Samson ends up the way that he does. Uh, and in some reasons, I think there are some good guesses. But um, obviously, these are two good people. These are two yes. people who are actually uh, still, even in, in the midst of 40 years of unfaithfulness, these two still know God. These two still know how to worship yes. God. They know what they're supposed to do, mm-hmm. and they're trying to do that. And so it speaks volumes of, of this these two individuals, and, uh, and and kind of you know we know that there's always going to be a remnant. There's always going to be a remnant who are faithful to the Lord. Uh, Jesus said that that His kingdom will not you know will never fade away. It'll be there forever. And so here's just a remnant of of this uh, this tribe. You know they're still faithful and they're still trying. And, and you know it specifies that they're from Dan. And we know there's a lot of troubles with the mm-hmm. tribe of Dan. There's a lot of issues there. It has been and will be. And so that they are a part of that tribe, I think, also says, you know what? God can call his people from any background, and he can make amazing and wonderful things happen for them personally, but also for the community and the whole world because of what they do. Yeah, that's good. It's not a respecter of persons. No, no. It'll take anybody and just have a willing, humble heart that says, okay, God, use me. Let's do 
Well, speaking of willing and humble hearts, that is not who Samson is. And no. So uh, we will start talking. About, like, he's still a good person. So we will uh, <laughs> uh, we will talk about that starting next week uh, as we dive into chapter fourteen. But question number four is always the same. Who else do you know that needs to to hear what we've been talking about today? Hope that you'll share this link with them. We're so glad you joined us today. Again, we'll pick up Judges fourteen. Start looking at some of those crazy things that Samson does and uh, maybe looking at the background behind it to go with it. Uh, it'll be fun, and I hope that you'll join us for that. And uh, do we want to end with a song today? <laughs> nope. Take the name of Jesus with you. There you go. Everywhere you go, take it with you. Uh, have a great week. We're done. I, we're, we've lost all control here on this set today, and uh, we're finished. Take care. God bless. Have a great week.